So a Thalamyces root rot, that is our most devastating root rot of peas. So you'll commonly hear peas hate wet feet, and this is one of the big reasons why. Saturated soils are perfect for root rots like a Phanomyces, and it really helps this disease spread throughout the field. Part of the reason it is so devastating is that it will lie dormant in the soil for a long time in the absence of a host crop. So this photo is from 2020, and the peas were last grown in this field in 2004, or 16 years earlier. The other part of this is that it's also the environment the last time peas were grown. So it was pretty wet in this field in 2004, and that contributed to the disease load that's persisting in this field. I also suspect there have been some host weed species perpetuating this disease throughout the years, either in the field or in the ditches next door. Here are two neighboring pea fields. So for the farmer on the left, this is their first time growing peas. And then for the farmer on the right, that field has a pea history and, and a Phanomyces root rot infection. So depending on the disease load in the soil, and if there's soil moisture available, yield losses in peas can be pretty high, and they can lead to crop failures. The other difference between these two fields is seeding date. 2022 was a challenging spring, and the field on the right was seeded earlier and faced a lot more of those challenges in May than that later seeded field on the left. Now that peas have been grown in both fields, we will see if Phanomyces start to move into this field on the left, likely along some of these, these shared water runs. With root rots in the field, the typical symptoms we see are yellowing pea shoots above ground, maybe some dying off, they're stunted, and when you dig up those roots, they'll be rotting, brownish, kind of unhealthy looking, and have no nodules. If we take a closer look at a Phanomyces symptom specifically, that characteristic infection symptom is this honey brown or caramel colored infection of the lateral roots starting in June. And then as it progresses, the tap roots become pinched, and we have um, this blackening of the taproot. And that's from this fusarium root rot that typically are also moving in around July. Above ground, the peas are yellow and stunted. This characteristic honey brown stage is pretty fairly short lived between before fusarium moves in. So rather than trying to separate them in the field, we do often rely on a lab test for Phanomyces confirmation. So fusarium root rot is also commonly infecting pea crops, but it doesn't have the same longevity as the phanomyces in the soil. So fusariums are still quite troubling though because they have so many crop hosts. So in this field here, we had a clear pattern showing up in the peas and Jen, our Eastern agronomist asked me to come out. So normally when we have patterns like this photo showing up in peas with a root rot, my mind goes to a phanomyces. So this field used to be split north-south, and I was thinking we were seeing a difference here in the time between pea crops of those two halves, those two 80s. Now, though, this field is split east-west, and this line of crop yellowing was starting to show up pretty distinctly in the neighboring soybeans, too. So soybeans are not a host of Aphanomyces, so that's a clue that something else was going on. Lab tests came back indicating this was a fusarium root rot that had set in, and a pretty severe one at that. Uh, so there are also some other things probably going on in this field, but I really just wanted to use these photos to illustrate that we do have other root rots that can be playing a role in peas, and you'll see them showing up in your other crops too. So there are ways to tell if Anomyces and Fusarium root rots apart, but they are often occurring together in a field. Some of the key differences are the main taproot where number two is pointing, It'll be blackened with fusarium, while with the phanomyces it's more pinched and kind of caramel colored. And then the main other difference is in those lateral roots, where we have this caramel decay happening in a phanomyces infected plants versus fairly healthy lateral roots with fusarium root rots. But again, they're often happening together in the field. And the trouble with the phanomyces is its longevity in these oospores. So these are pea roots under the microscope, and they're infected with the phanomyces. So these little circles in the root tissue, those are oospores. The resting spores that have these really incredibly thick cell walls, they lie dormant in the soil for years and are very resilient to environmental conditions. So you can sort of see how thick these cell walls are here. Tried to blow it up a little bit. And they're troublemakers not only because they're surviving really well, but they're also pretty resistant to different methods we're trying to use to quantify their levels in the soil in the field. 
So those oospores there, once they detect a host like peas in the field, they'll germinate into zoospores that swim to infect roots. So to do this, they're going to need moisture in the soil to swim to roots to start infecting. So Phanomyces prefers warm, saturated soils, while Fusarium root rots will infect both in dry and wet conditions, as long as that soil is warm. So we do have our root rot for every temperature, and this table at the bottom is really sort of showing that. But these two, they really generally like it quite warm. For Phanomyces, we generally see symptoms starting to show up in June and July, about two to three weeks after a good rain. And since water is playing such a big role, anything that's keeping water in the field will promote disease development, more clay content, poor drainage, and compaction. This is some research from Dr. Shama Chatterton in Lethbridge and her student Kyle. So they looked at pea roots under three different moisture regimes. So low moisture is less than 30% soil moisture, medium was about 40%, and then high was 50 to 60%. And then they infected it with a Phanomyces, which is the gray bars, Fusarium in yellow bars, as well as a combination of both. So root rot severity, that's the graph on the left. It was much worse when peas were infected with both a Phanomyces and Fusarium root rots. But for a Phanomyces specifically, severity really peaked under high moisture, the 50 to 60% soil moisture. So the table on the right, that's illustrating the disease load returning to the soil through infected crop residues. When soil moisture was greater, we see a huge amount of increase in aphanomyces in those roots. So it's really skyrocketing there. And this has implications for how long it's going to last in the soil, since now you're starting with such a higher disease load that you have to draw down before your next pea crop. So remembering what soil moisture was like in the last time peas were grown in a field, that's going to be really important. So where is Aphanomyces in Manitoba specifically? How prevalent is it in our pea fields? So annually, we're surveying pea crops for foliar, root, and stem diseases. Last year, 2022, with a return to more soil moisture, we did see plenty of diseases pop up and not just root rots. But Fusarium, on the left, that was found in every field surveyed in 2022, and almost every field also had some level of Aphanomyces root rot detected. So we do typically find some level of Fusarium infecting every pea field every year, just because of that broad host range. But that's a pretty startling number for Aphanomyces. And if we look at Aphanomyces over time from this survey, how many fields were infected each year, the number of fields infected of this root rot has been increasing. And it's typically worse in wetter growing seasons like 2020 and 2022. The rainfall amounts on each bar, these millimeters in the bottom, are the May to July accumulated rainfall from the Brandon Weather Station. And that's just to illustrate how much this is relating to spring moisture. If we have more moisture, we're seeing more Aphanomyces spreading. It's also really important to note with these that the way they detect Aphanomyces in the survey at Dr. Kim's lab is by using a very sensitive PCR method. So not all of these positive fields would have had disease symptoms high enough to have de devastating symptoms yet. So they are working on refining these numbers just to indicate disease severity and oospore loads. But the survey data is showing us that Aphanomyces is lurking in a lot of fields. And this is a disease we should really be thinking about a bit more, also in conjunction with what kind of moisture we're getting in the early part of summer. I should note with the survey, these fields most of the surveyed fields are in western Manitoba just because that's where a large amount of the pea acres are, but we really have been making an effort to expand those to central Manitoba as pea acres have expanded. So we are finding Aphanomyces in central Manitoba as well. It's not just a Manit uh, western Manitoba problem, and we're also finding it in fields with newer pea farmers. So it might be lurking and it's worth to be thinking about. How much root rot is too much? So in this photo at the bottom, we have a pea field that was positive for Aphanomyces, but this was also one of the nicer pea fields I stepped into last year. And it did well because those oospore levels in the majority of the field were low enough that pea production was still profitable. So these water runs and low sprots are really the only parts of the field where we had any kind of yellowing in the peas. So taking a longer break between peas once you know Aphanomyces is in the field, that's necessary to draw oospore levels down. 
So we want to see an eight year break, but you can get away with six, that's the minimum. But the time between those pea crops is really gonna come down to the environment the last time peas were grown. If it was wetter, you're gonna wanna take a longer break. But the threshold generally is 100 oospores per gram of soil. That's for when we're starting to see crop damage because typically we also have some fusarium infections uh, happening as well. So the trouble with that threshold is that it's very similar to the threshold for detection. So what a commercial soil test is able to reliably pick up in the field is about at the same level as the threshold for when we're seeing crop damage. And that's because of those thick walled oospores. DNA extraction can be pretty tricky and this can result in some false negatives. So we want to confirm that this is the root rot that we have in our pea fields because management of it is pretty tricky. For lab confirmation, you do have the option to send in infected plant samples in the growing season or to take soil samples. And soil samples can be taken any time of year, and we want to collect soil from the 4 to 8 inch depth. So there are a few diagnostic labs that can confirm presence, and some can also provide an oospore number from soil samples. So the Crop Diagnostic Center located in Winnipeg, that's a free service provided by Manitoba Agriculture. So if you're ever unsure of any disease in your field, uh, this is a great place you can send samples just to get a disease ID. So they'll accept plant samples. Other commercial labs are available for testing too, and their turnaround time is going to be a bit quicker. And they'll also be able to accept soil samples. So you can sample in the shoulder season to help make that decision if that field's ready for peas. So these labs, and also compare fields for Phanomyces. So if you're have, having trouble deciding where to put peas next, they can kind of get a guess on which, not a guess, but a estimate on which one is gonna be better suited, have maybe lower levels. Um, but you're gonna wanna take a look at which one of these is doing presence and which is actually quantifying oospore numbers. And they have a bit more information on each of their respective websites. So this isn't an exhaustive list of all the labs that can test for phanomyces in the prairies, uh, but these are the ones that are kind of closer to home in Manitoba. So to scout for phanomyces, there are a few places we can look and sample from to improve our detection of this disease. So generally places to look are those that are holding or accumulating water, like drains and water runs. We can also look at low spots or approaches and headlands where there's been more compaction and we're holding a bit more water. At the end of the day though, peas will tell you where to sample. They'll be yellowing in that area generally. Let's get into some management options now. So crop rotation is our really only successful tool right now. We want to avoid host crops for a minimum of six years. And if it was wet the last time peas were grown or heavy root rot pressure was noted in that field, we do want to extend that break to eight or 10 years. So peas and lentils, those are extremely susceptible host and feeling the damage the most. Uh, but we do have other crop hosts for Phanomyces. They're not as susceptible as peas as lentils, but they can be perpetuating that disease cycle and having these in the mix mean those oospore levels won't be drawn down effectively throughout the crop rotation. So for dry beans and alfalfa, there is some variability among market classes for which are hosts, which are not, and their general kind of tolerance. I wasn't able to find a good answer to tell you which market classes or varieties are the ones to be more concerned about. Sicer milk vetch, it's another host. So if you're thinking to move a field to hay for a while just to let it cool off, the legumes in your forage mix are going to matter since clovers, vetches are both hosts along with milk vetch. And then we do have weed hosts as well. So shepherd's purse are chickweeds. We want to make sure we're managing our weeds effectively. And then as for non-host or resistant legumes, we can mix these into the rotation to take advantage of having an end fixing crop while taking a break from peas. So soybeans are not a host to a phanomyces and they're a good option to put in, but do be aware that there is some trouble with our processors and how long of a break they'll need to see between a pea crop and a soybean crop in the same field. So keep that in mind and check in with them uh, on that rotation. Faba beans, they generally like man the Manitoba environment. They prefer cool temperatures and plenty of water. So they are an option and they're excellent at fixing nitrogen. And then we have lupins as well. And for forages, we have sane point and bird's foot trefoil, which are not hosts as well. One of the ongoing research projects across the prairies with Dr. Chatterton is looking at rotations and incorporating one of those alternative legumes into the mix just to see if uh, we can see a yield response and what happens with a phanomyces disease response over time. 
So these are some preliminary results for the Redvers location, where the alternative crop they're looking at is soybeans in rotation with peas, wheat, and canola. So for disease severity, taking a break from peas is generally drawing down uh, disease severity in June, but rainfall is playing a pretty big role. And in terms of pea yield at Redvers, they are starting to see a slight bump in yield from including soybeans in the rotation. Those are the green bars in this graph on the right. But those are preliminary, so I'm excited to see more from this research down the road. And then having pea varieties that are resistant to aphanomyces would be the ultimate tool to manage this disease, but we're still a ways away from that. So resistance is controlled by many minor genes and provides partial resistance or tolerance to aphanomyces. As a result, getting this into commercially competitive varieties that yield well and stand up, quite literally, the ones that don't lodge, um, that's been pretty challenging. So we're still a ways away from genetic resistance. North Dakota research has been looking at the conditions around seeding to see if there's anything we can do there. So seeding date and soil temperatures were two of those factors. From their research, early planting has really shined. So planting into soil temperatures below 10 degrees within a week of seeding reduced re root rot severity by up to 26%. And it improved yield by four to eight bushels compared to planting into warmer soils. And the whole idea there is that seeding early meant peas had time to get established before soils were warm enough for fusarium and aphanomyces root rots to develop. Both of those diseases are preferring warmer soils. So this actually pairs really well with the data MASC has shown us relating pea seeding date to yield potential. So planting in the last week of April or the first week of May has resulted in more than 100% relative yield response over the last 15 years in Manitoba peas. Seed treatments are also available targeting aphanomyces specifically. So the ones with activity on this root rot are pretty new. We have Intego Solo, which contains Ethoboxum and is included in a couple other seed treatment packages. And then Rancona Trio, which has different, a different active ingredient with efficacy on aphanomyces. So both of these are suppression and will provide protection during the early part of the growing season. Again, the idea here is let's get these peas established. So aphanomyces will still move into those crops after seed treatment has worn off. It's not a complete solution, but it might help us get established. So I found some research looking specifically at Ethoboxum or Intego is the trade name from North Dakota and Alberta. In North Dakota, adding Ethoboxum to the seed treatment package only improved yield with later planting dates and warmer soils. In Alberta research, they didn't find a benefit to the seed treatment in reducing disease severity of aphanomyces. So not a complete solution. Uh, research results are a little bit variable. Uh, and I actually don't have any information right now on Rancona's activity, unfortunately. Our other fungicide seed treatments, though, they're providing protection against our usual root rot complex of Fusarium, Rhizoctonia, and Pythium root rots, but not aphanomyces. So in North Dakota, Looking at fields that had root rot history, there was benefit to using a seed treatment to protect against these early season root rots. They, that improved yield by three to five bushels. So these do have a place when field history has seen quite a bit of root rots, uh, but fusarium as well as aphanomyces can move in after the seed treatment has worn off. So not a complete solution, but it's part, part of the package. What I would like to see is some on-farm testing of seed treatments in peas with our unique Manitoba growing season. So both testing of fungicide seed treatments for root rots, but also the insecticide seed treatment for controlling pea leaf weevils, which are a newer pest to Manitoba. Seed treatment trials are fairly straightforward to conduct. So it's treated versus untreated strips throughout the field, replicated and randomized just for that statistical analysis. So if you're wondering about using a seed treatment and if it will pay, MPSG has an on-farm network that will help investigate this on your farm with you, and we can get an answer to some of these questions. A quick synopsis, since I don't want to spend too much time talking about research um, that I don't have a ton of information on. Uh, at, I just want to be absolutely clear, Aphanomyces is being actively researched since it is so devastating, and it's being researched across the prairies. So a lot of this is being done with Dr. Shama Chatterton in Lethbridge and her collaborators across the Canadian prairies. So our first and really only great management tool is crop rotation. And that's avoiding host crops for about six to eight years and making note of those wet years for when that break needs to be extended further. Genetic resistance is promising, but it is a long ways away. Seed treatments can help 
but they're not a complete solution. And there are a bunch of biological controls coming on board, but so far nothing's really shined out of those products available. Soil amendments, they're looking at liming in Alberta and Saskatchewan, so adding calcium and increasing the pH. It's sort of mixed results. It seems to work a little bit better when disease pressure is low. Uh, here in Manitoba, most of our soils do have plenty of calcium and higher pH, but we do have some acidic fields. So this might have a fit here in some, some places and, and regions. But results have been a little bit variable, so I'm curious to see what comes out of that research once it's complete. Uh, calcium works really well with aphanomyces and sugar beets. So this one's kind of a solid maybe right now. We'll see what comes when that research has wrapped up. And then research has shown some aphanomyces disease suppression benefits from canola, mustard, and oats. But we haven't seen that show up consistently in the field when we use them as cover crops, green manures, or as intercrops. But it is a bit more promising if we can figure out how to get this to reliably come through in the field. So Scott Chalmers at Wado uh, in Melita, they've had some pea intercrops at a heavy root rot site. And one of the peolas had less aphanomyces oospore production. So there is potential here, but we just wanna make sure we can get it to show up consistently. And then researchers are also looking at making a better risk prediction tool. And this is one of Shama's focuses. So a soil test that can tell us how much of all the different root rot species we have in the field, when can we actually return that field to peas successfully? Uh, but there are some challenges here because of that high false negative rate, especially when we've had dry conditions like we've had for quite a few years. Um, and those thick walled oospores just being really tricky to work with. But that is the goal is having a risk tool. Because right now, what we have for risk prediction is this resource from Saskatchewan Pulse Growers. It's a tool to determine ahead of growing peas, uh, the risk of aphanomyces root rot infection for a specific field. So it's a checklist and we're going over what happened the last time peas were grown in that field, evaluating how much of a disease load might be in the field. It's also considering how well drained the field is versus how likely it is to hold water. What's the rotational risk for, for crop frequency? And then it's also uh, including minor factors like weed hosts, fusarium risk, because once we have fusariums in there with infantomyces, the root rot pressure is just so much higher. And then it also includes some recommendations to establish a strong pea crop that can withstand that infection a little bit better. So this is a really great resource. Uh, you can find it by Googling Saskatchewan pulse growers reducing root rot risk. So to summarize though, unfortunately we don't have a lot of great management strategies for aphanomyces right now, but it does start with field selection. Peas need fields that don't hold water. Good drainage is really important. Step one is getting a lab confirmation that aphanomyces root rot is in your field since that's impacting your crop rotation length. And once we find it in a field, extending the rotation so peas are every six or eight years will draw those disease levels down. You can incorporate some non-host legumes like soybeans and faba beans in the meantime to take advantage of end fixing benefits. And then record keeping is going to be really important and the environment around the last time peas were grown, just to note and decide if you might be better off with a longer break between pea crops. Since fusarium root rots make disease severity worse, avoid fields that have had heavy fusarium infections to limit root rots. And that's both fusarium head blight as well as uh, fusarium root rots. And then we have seed treatments, which are available for early season management. We do want to see some more on-farm testing of those, uh, but there is some potential there to include them in the package. So a quick overarching recap, aphanomyces root rot is more common than we think in Manitoba, and we should be testing pea fields where root rot is present or those peas are yellowing just to inform our crop rotation and management decisions. Let's keep peas profitable in our fields. So what we want to do is sample soils or plants from areas where peas are yellowing, most often those low-lying areas of the field. And once we get those results back, it'll help really inform some of our management decisions, especially around crop rotation. With that, I'll leave you with a couple pea resources. So Saskatchewan Pulse Growers have some great fact sheets on aphanomyces root rot. One of them's here. And internally at MPSG, we have insect and disease scouting calendar and identification guides. And those are all available at manitobapulse.ca. So some great resources to help you along. With that, thanks for your time today. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Um, so 
I was Laura, the agronomist for Western Manitoba for Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Growers.